the role of, of herbal medicine um, often comes under the term complementary medicine. Another word that's used these days is alternative medicine, although that seems to be phasing out simply because it's not really an alternative to, say, orthodox medicine or, or conventional medicine. Uh, we believe, um, as herbalists, that, you know, they basically integrate together and complementary medicine is more is more, you know, the, the statement that we wish to make with this. Though. So herbs can be used very closely in conjunction to a lot of allopathic drugs um, and are relatively safe to be used in conjunction with them. Again, you know, I, I, I say this statement with a little bit of caution because, again, you have to seek professional advice just to make sure that there isn't going to be any drug interactions that are that are going on. But there's a role in, in our society, in our world, that whereby, you know, there are lots of different forms of healing, whether that's spiritual healing, physical healing, whether that's conventional medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine or Western herbal medicine, um, all those have a role to play and can be what's known as synergistically uh, blended and brought together and, and, and worked in, in combination and work very, very well. Well, the Chinese look at yin and yang as a basis to keep their bodies in balance. So if say an organ function is out of balance, they'll use herbs to bring it back. So my parents would use black beans and put it into soup because that helps tonify the kidney. They also would use gochitsu, which is like a little red berry, and that's put in for nourishing liver to help the vision and for eyes. And, um, and the other thing is because it tends to be sweet, it helps the food taste better. Da Jiao is um, a, re a red Chinese date or black Chinese date, and there's a tendency for us to use it a lot to put into soups because it helps our body energy and the spleen stomach function. I'm sure a lot of our viewers are probably familiar with herbs like Echinacea, um, Hydrastis, which is commonly known as, as Golden Seal. Um, those are some of the popular ones. Some of the other ones that have recently come into the limelight have been um, Ginkgo biloba, uh, commonly known as ginkgo, and perhaps, you know, herbs like passion flower, skull cap. St. John's wort is one that we're hearing a lot about. These are all medicinal herbs that are uh, available. And then herbs like chamomile, more of the culinary um, aromatic ones like chamomile, lemon balm, you know, garlic, capsicum. These are some of the ones that we, we're probably using every day in cooking, but not even aware that they all possess some sort of um, medicinal elements and medicinal properties to them. Garlic not only gives an incredible taste to food, but it's nature's antibiotic. So it's great for prevention, not only for colds and flus, but to decrease cholesterol, inhibit platelet aggregation, so you're preventing blood clots. Basically, it's heart health. Probably one of my favorite herbs to use preventatively is echinacea. And I use it a lot in um, pregnancy and with children, mainly because it's been one of the most heavily studied herbs in the world. Uh, it's actually the number one drug sold in Germany. So it's, uh, and that's where most of the research has been done on it. It's actually native to um, the Midwest in uh, North America. And it's a North American Indian herb, and that's where we learned about a lot of its uses. Um, I, the reason I like to use it preventatively is because it doesn't have any known toxicity with it. I, I don't recommend that any herb be used on a long-term basis, and echinacea is one of them. There has been some studies that have shown that long-term use of it can actually depress the immune system, which what we're trying to do is increase the immune system. Those studies actually are quite controversial, but at, because we're waiting for subsequent research, we're generally recommending that people um, be on them for you know, a short period, like two weeks on, two weeks off, so that they're not, their body's not adapting to the effect of the of the herb. Um, echinacea is a wonderful herb because it's actually shown to increase your own immune function. It actually increases the T cells which are part of your immune system so you can fight off an infection yourself. Another aspect of herbal medicine that I think is just being lost just a little bit is we think of it as a medicine. And it's true, herbs are medicines, but they're also a food. They also are there to nourish you, to strengthen the body. Our bodies have the ability to, to always be there for us in that way. We just need to learn to nourish the body in that way so it can always be there. Nettles is one of my favorite for that. It's, um, it's, so, it's, it's compact in so many nutrients 
they're absorbable nutrients, your body's going to be able to know what to do with them, and it's going to give you that lift in a, in a non-stimulating way, meaning that it's just going to support you. It's just going to be a highly packed nutrient drink that's there to support you. Nettle is one of my favorite herbs, and I use it probably at the center of my practice because it's a whole body tonic. It improves the whole general health of all the different systems of the body. Um, circulation, um, you know, it, it, the old herbals will tell you that it will help for women who have been having miscarriages. It helps to strengthen the body that way. For uh, It will make healthy skin. It will make shiny hair and bright eyes. And this is what I found. When I get those, you know, little children or people who are pale and wan, fatigued and have no energy, nettle is the first thing that I think of. Um, chronic fatigue syndrome or any of these kinds of uh, conditions where people just have no energy, I give them nettle to, as a foundation to strengthen the body. It has high vitamins and minerals, it's got a lot of iron in it, and is easily available. The wild cherry is uh, very good for everything. And uh, my mother used to use it, and it was passed down to me, so... And I know that it's used quite a bit by a lot of natives today. It would be used for laryngitis, for the flu, for TB, uh, pneumonia, I guess diabetes. The inner bark is good for eye medicine too as well. So it's also good for cancer too as well. Yeah. I think the best herb that you can take is good old-fashioned porridge oats. And this is something that has um, got a lot, nice lot of soft fiber. It's got a nice lot of um, trigonelline, which is an alkaloid to balance blood sugars. It's got um, substances in it, which is um, a venin, which is something that is a good digestive quality. And uh, when you've got something like this, which has got a nice lot of magnesium in it, it calms you down. And uh, really important to be able to have something to start the day with is your good old-fashioned porridge oats. The Scots love it. <laughs> If I were to choose one essential oil for overall balance and well-being, it would be essential oil of lavender. It just covers so many, uh, such a wide spectrum of uh, ailments, conditions, and it's so good for stress. It's really good for the immune system. It's very balancing, very balancing. It's good for the reproductive system.